Hi, my name is Jeffrey Litt, and I'll be presenting joint work done with Sarah Lim, Martin Kleppman, and Peter Van Hardenberg, supported by the Industrial Research Lab and KinSwitch. I'll be telling you about Paratext, a novel algorithm for mediating collaboration over rich text documents. These days, rich text collaboration is everywhere. We all use tools like Google Docs as part of knowledge work. And these tools don't operate on plain text, they operate on rich text, which includes things like bold and italics and other formatting. Now these tools and interfaces for writing rest on top of distributed systems algorithms. These algorithms help ensure correctness in the collaborative editing process, and they also help define the kinds of collaboration that are even possible to begin with. A key challenge in collaborative editing tools is how to handle concurrent editing, when multiple people edit the same document without having seen each other's changes. And in these scenarios, there are two important properties that we want to preserve. The first is strong eventual consistency. Everyone should eventually end up seeing the same state of the document on their respective devices. The second property is a more nebulous one. It's the idea of intent preservation. Here we mean that the shared state that everyone converges to should somehow be reasonable. It should reflect a faithful merge of the intentions of the original edits. Let's look at an example of intent preservation in the domain of plain text. Let's say we start with the sentence, the fox jumped, and two users concurrently insert different words in the sentence. One inserts quick, the other inserts brown. What should the final result be once we merge back together? One result we could imagine is something like this, where all the letters get combined in some order. But this is a difficult result to work with and edit later because the two words have become interleaved with each other. So we can say that this is a failure of intent preservation in some sense. A better merge result might be something like this, putting the individual words that were inserted separately so that we can edit from there. A key contribution of our work in Paratext is extending these ideas of intent preservation properties from plain text to rich text with formatting. For example, consider this sentence from before, and this time, Alice bolds the entire sentence and Bob inserts the word brown. What should happen when these two results merge together? You might say that we should end up with something like this, where the words that Alice bolded have become bold and the newly inserted word is not bold. But this seems like a sort of strange result because it seems like Alice's intention wasn't to bold those individual words, it was to bold the entire sentence. A better result might be something like this, where the entire sentence, including the newly inserted word, has been bolded. And this is the result that we propose as intent preserving in our work. Let's consider another example where two users concurrently apply formatting to the same document. Here, Alice bolds these two words, and Bob italicizes these two words. In this case, the merge result is pretty straightforward. Because bold and italic can both exist on the same characters, we can have the middle word fox be both bold and italic. Now let's consider another example of concurrent formatting. In this case, Alice sets these words to red, and Bob sets these words to blue. The problem is, when we merge now, we can't set the middle word fox to be both red and blue. We propose that the best solution here is just to pick one of those colors arbitrarily as the color for the overlapping word. Our paper has more examples like this to illustrate our proposed specification for intent preservation in rich text editing. Next, let's explore some of the solutions that are possible for satisfying these specifications. A popular class of approaches is known as operational transform, or OT. And the basic idea there is that we transform operations relative to each other to account for concurrent editing. For example, we might adjust numeric indexes of insertions to account for other concurrent insertions. There are multiple commercial implementations of OT for rich text, which support products like Google Docs and Word 365. However, there are some drawbacks to the OT approach. A major drawback is that all the known rich text OT algorithms that correctly converge require a central server. This can limit the scalability of an algorithm. It also prohibits decentralized editing workflows and limits the ability to apply end-to-end -end encryption. Another drawback of OT is that it's designed for a particular kind of editing workflow where there's one main document and edits are being applied to that shared document as soon as possible. OT isn't designed for more flexible branching and merging workflows where there can be many versions of a document simultaneously and they can be merged into each other at any time. Finally, OT can be complex to implement because it requires a different transformation function for every pair of operation types. 
A different class of approaches is known as conflict-free replicated data types, or CRDTs. And the key idea here is to model operations in a fundamentally commutative way, so we avoid the need to transform operations relative to each other. And CRDTs can have good support for decentralized and offline editing workflows, and can support more flexible merging and branching workflows, like the ones I was just mentioning. However, while there's many plain text CRDTs, there has not been much work on rich text CRDTs. There's no published academic work on the subject. Let's take a look at how CRDTs for plain text sequences work. Typically, they assign IDs to individual characters in the sequence, like these shown here. And then our operations for inserting characters happen relative to those IDs. For example, if you want to insert the letter X here, instead of giving a numeric insertion index, we say after this ID. Another key idea is that instead of deleting characters entirely from the sequence, we can use tombstone flags to model deletions. Now you might ask, could we just add some simple extensions to these existing plain text CRDTs to enable them to support rich text? For example, you could add inline control characters like HTML tags into the plain text sequence. However, we show in our paper that these kinds of simple extensions actually fail to preserve intent the way we want. And that brings us to our proposed algorithm, pair text. We do extend the plain text CRDT in pair text, but in a very particular way that ensures intent preservation and convergence. Our first key idea is that we maintain a set of formatting operations alongside the plain text sequence. For example, here we have an operation to add bolding to part of the sequence. The operations start and end on either side of these characters. You can see here that this operation is attached to these particular characters in the sequence. It's also very important that this set of formatting operation only grows. So when we remove formatting, we don't remove operations. Instead, we add more operations to represent removing formatting. A second key idea is that we can deterministically derive a state of the formatted document from the plain text sequence and our set of formatting operations. The basic idea is to iterate over the document from left to right and look at which operations are active in each region of the document and add them all together to arrive at the formatting for that particular span of the document. In the paper, we describe more details of how exactly this works and how we can make it efficient. A final detail is considering what happens when different operations conflict with each other. For example, here we have an operation to add bold and remove bold formatting on the same span of the document. In these cases, we use a standard last writer wins conflict resolution strategy, which means that we can compare logical timestamps between these operations to pick one of them to win deterministically across all of our replicas. That's all I have time for for now. Thanks so much for listening. You can see our paper for a fuller specification of intent preservation, pseudocode and TypeScript code for our algorithm, and a formal proof that it converges. And you can see more information at this URL right here. Thanks so much.